Hey guys, well tonight I've got a, another repair project going on out here in my shop. Um, and unfortunately it's on my air compressor. Uh, I did a video a couple months back on replacing this magnetic contactor right here. Uh, the old one, the contacts had fused and uh, just needed to be replaced. This one's been working great ever since, but tonight I came out here to do some automotive work and I needed uh, compressed air for that. And I only had about 50 PSI in the tank and the compressor wouldn't turn on. So naturally I went and looked at the breaker panel and uh, the circuit breaker was tripped for the air compressor. So uh, that's where we're at right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take you guys through the procedure that uh, I use for troubleshooting a, a component like this air compressor. All right, now I have turned the circuit breaker back on. So there is power to the magnetic contactor for this, but I turned the pressure switch off right here so the compressor wouldn't be trying to start up. Uh, I have also removed the belt pulley guard right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just turn this thing over by hand and make sure there's no mechanical binding or, uh, or anything like that that's keeping the machine from turning. And it's not. Uh, the unloader valve is working. Everything's turning over really easy. The motor should have no problem starting that compressor. Now that we know it turns over easy by hand, I'm going to go ahead and flip the pressure switch on and just see what we get here. Alright, so as you can see, the motor had a hard time starting up there. Um, it turned a couple of revolutions, but uh, definitely didn't have enough torque to come up to speed. So this is a single phase, 5 horsepower, 1800 RPM motor. And that's a real 5 horsepower, not the phony 5 peak horsepower you see on all the machines at the big box stores. And it's a uh, 240 volt single phase motor, so it's actually a capacitor start, capacitor run motor. There's a couple of big capacitors in here. And uh, I suspect that, just with my experience with electric motors, that start capacitor is bad. So we'll go ahead and take that cover off and do some troubleshooting there. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and pop the belt off and uh, just make sure that the motor actually does come up to speed, listen to it, and uh, make sure there's no funny smells or smoke or anything coming from it. Alright, well the motor sounded just fine. I uh, didn't detect anything odd there at all. So I definitely suspect that it's that start capacitor. We'll go ahead and take that cover off and get to some troubleshooting. Now just a word of caution, I have unplugged this machine, however, because it's got a couple of big capacitors in here, uh, it's not necessarily safe. Uh, those capacitors could be charged up to 240 volts and uh, they have the ability to release that, uh, that stored energy very quickly. Uh, definitely a possibility of being lethal, so we definitely want to be careful as we go poking around in here. But uh, So these are our two capacitors that are in here. You can see they're fairly decent size. Uh, this one up here is a um, most likely our run capacitor, and this one's most likely our start capacitor right here. And this is what I suspect is bad. So we'll go ahead and take it out of there and do some testing. Uh, the uh, manufacturer of this motor has provided a nice helpful diagram right here. And you can see the windings right here. You have our uh, this is a winding that's connected directly to the uh, to the line supply and this one right here is our capacitor um, generated winding and basically what this does is this is uh, the, these capacitors generate uh, uh, without going into a huge amount of detail they artificially generate a second phase that gives the motor more torque and uh, this uh, capacitor right here this one here this is our start capacitor uh, and this actually separates the phase even more and gives the motor more starting torque. 
and this item right here in the diagram this is an inertia switch and what that does is when the motor stopped that switch is closed so this capacitor is in the circuit and as the motor comes up to speed this switch opens and takes the capacitor out of the circuit uh, this capacitor isn't designed for continuous use so it only works as the motor is coming up to speed and then is taken out of the circuit so it's only it's only in the circuit for maybe uh, you know a second or two right when the motor first starts up and this one right here is uh, the, the run capacitor it's in the circuit at all times so actually what I might do is uh, probably easiest to actually test this inertia switch first um, just because I got uh, I got some labels right here. I got number 11 and T5. I can probably undo those wires and, and put an ohmmeter right across it. I'm going to be careful not to touch these terminals on the capacitors. But actually, so this capacitor right here, this is our start capacitor, and it's got this uh, shunt resistor right here, or bleeder resistor, and the function of that is to bleed off that uh, voltage that remains in these that I was uh, cautioning you about earlier. So actually, these are, are likely safe. This probably bleeds the voltage off in a matter of a few seconds after it's shut down. So we'll still go ahead and put a voltmeter on it and test it just to make sure I'm not going not to get shocked here. Yeah, we have zero volts there. So, yeah, these capacitors are safe to touch. So, and definitely, if you want to be super safe, you can go ahead and short across the terminals, making sure you're not actually touching uh, metal with it. Yeah, we're definitely safe. Okay, so I'm going to verify that this is our start capacitor, and see right here, I've got. Uh, Got number 11 labeled on that wire, and uh, the other one is probably our, uh, let's see that's 7, uh, I need to find T5 here, so here's 11. Alright, here's T5. So I'm going to go ahead and just check that inertia switch real quick, it's a really easy test to do. so. So I set my uh, digital meter to check resistance and uh, without the terminals touching anything I got infinite resistance. With them touching I got zero resistance. So we'll actually change that to an audible tone. Okay so we'll go ahead and test across to our terminal 11 and our T5. When actually I don't have continuity, I expected to hear that beep. When the motor stopped, that switch should be closed. Let me just double, double check my diagram here. 11 to T5. Huh. Well, usually it's the capacitor that's gone bad, but I think maybe in this case it's actually our inertia switch. Um, I can actually verify that by setting up a temporary switch here. I'm going to go ahead and rig up a temporary switch so I can manually put this capacitor in the start circuit and uh, if our motor comes up to speed then we'll know that uh, it's actually the inertia switch and not the capacitor. Alright, before I fire this compressor back up I'll just take a second to explain what I've done here. I've taken a temporary switch and I've run it between this uh, terminal 11 right here to this point right here, this T5 uh, common junction point. And so basically it runs in parallel with this inertia switch. So I suspect that this inertia switch has failed. It's open, should be closed. And so what I've done is I've got a push button switch here. So when I first turn on the compressor, I'll have to manually push the push button switch. 
and that'll put the starting capacitor, this capacitor right here, in the circuit. And then once the motor comes up to speed, I'll just manually release it. And uh, if the compressor fires up when I do this, then I'll know that I've found the problem. It's definitely that inertia switch. So we'll go ahead and put the belt back on and try it out. All right, this might look just a little bit ghetto here, and I uh, apologize for that, but uh, I happen to have this um, this panel floating around already. So uh, what this is, is a, it was an old uh, control panel off of a CNC piece of equipment that I dismantled, uh, part of a surplus auction that I got. So anyway, I've hooked up this push button switch right here, this automatic switch. Uh, I think that's the one I used, yep. So this one, the momentary push button switch, so when we fire this compressor up, I will go ahead and, and push that switch, and if it comes up to speed, then I'll know that we've found our culprit. Well, I'd say that's it for sure. Our uh, inertia switch is what's failed. We'll try that again. Well, I was hoping the switch would kick back in with a couple of start and stops, but it's not. switch was our culprit inside the motor here and uh, that is a little bit unfortunate I was I was really uh, assuming that it was the start capacitor I was hoping it was too because the uh, start capacitor is cheap uh, you know they're 10 or 15 bucks and it's quick and easy to replace I mean you know it's a, it's a two or three minute job to unplug that and plug it back in and button the cover back up unfortunately the inertia switch is inside the motor I'm gonna have to take the motor apart but uh, I'm not gonna do that tonight because uh, I'm putting a new transmission in my car that's why I needed the shop air and uh, my jerry rig setup here with push button switch actually works pretty good. So uh, I'm going to leave this in place for tonight and uh, just use the push button switch every time I need the compressor to cycle on, uh, just so I can complete my project tonight. And then I will go ahead and disassemble the motor tomorrow and see if I can figure out what happened to that inertia switch. Well, so that's it. Uh, thanks for following along. Uh, pretty quick and easy troubleshooting project tonight out in the shop. Stay tuned for more.